Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. I'm gonna to talk to you guys once again, a little bit of a story time uh, episode where we go over the subject of why it is that I choose to travel and live in multiple countries around the world. So let's dive in. I'm trying to do a bit of a marathon of videos for you guys, building up some backup content so things are good. And so to give you some background on me, I have, I'm originally from Canada, I was born and raised there. I've lived in a bunch of different parts of Canada. I've lived in the US. I have lived in Costa Rica. I've lived in Serbia. I've lived in Bulgaria. At some point in time, I may I plan on living in some other countries as well. And I, in addition to that, I've traveled to, at this point in time, 54 countries. We're going to see. I'm aiming to push those numbers up by just exploring different parts of the world. I haven't been to all the continents yet. I haven't been to uh, South America. I haven't been anywhere south of Panama. So that's uh, something that you know, I want to go and explore and uh, lots more of other places as well but there's an interesting question of like okay this is it's quite costly to do this right it's costly not just in terms of raw money I spend quite a lot on travel but it's also costly in terms of opportunity cost you're just less productive when you're traveling okay it's just the nature of things and I'm gonna do some videos in the future on some tips in terms of how to keep productive while you're traveling but the reality is going from place to place is inherently inefficient. You have to readapt. Maybe the environment isn't quite right for getting your work done. Then you want to see different parts of, you know, when you go to a new place, what are you there for, right? I always thought that it was lame that you'd have singers, etc., athletes who would travel from city to city and they would never see the city that they were in, right? They'd go from the airport to the hotel, from the hotel to whatever venue they were at, they were back to the hotel and the hotel back to the airport and they were done. I want to see the world. I want to immerse myself in it. It's part of the reason that I like to live in a place rather than simply visit the place. Okay, it's nice to visit it. Uh, if I visit it, I like to try and spend, you know, at least, you know, a week to a month there, just depending on what's going on. And a lot of places I go back to. But I think it's, to me, uh, it's part of being somebody in the world today that I think is really valuable. You know, as I'm filming this, there's a lot of division in the world. There's all kinds of riots that are going on around the world. A lot of people are protesting, etc. If I go on social media, there's a real polarization that I see between viewpoints. Some people want to shut other people down. They don't want to hear this. And I think that's really unfortunate. I think that we are better people because of the fact that we experience and understand different cultures. I think that it helps us to think better. I think it helps us to see opportunities in the world more effectively. I just think that there are so many advantages to experiencing different cultures, meeting people who are different than us, immersing ourselves in a life that we didn't know. I'll give you an example that's you know quite extreme. I was somebody who was kind of raised on Tony Robbins, right? When I was I think in grade four, I first heard Tony Robbins. And so that shaped me. I've had a sense, I've done quite a bit of personal development and I've come to an understanding that I have a lot of personal power in my life, okay? Meaning that I have a great ability to shape my destiny. And I think most people do, especially most people from Western developed countries, okay? If you come from a country where you have a lot of infrastructure, you have free education, you have free healthcare, you can earn a decent living, etc., you're in a pretty strong position, okay? Yes. If you come from certain backgrounds, you know, you know your family background, your socioeconomic background, etc., you may have more or less. But the truth is, you're pretty capable. And in most places where I go, I try and I think to myself, if I was born here, if I was living here, knowing what I know, how would I behave? So Serbia is a good example of this. I have a number of friends in Serbia. Serbia, wonderful people there. And when I went there, I was like, okay, look, there's a lot of problems here that give somebody born here at disadvantage, but there's some advantages too, right? The cost of living is low. Uh, you've got access to you know, a really talented group of people. I mentioned that I hire most of the people who we work with, we hire from Serbia. I uh, really like working with people from Serbia. And it's like, okay, great. That's wonderful. There are some opportunities. And in particular, the things that I always tell people is I'm like, look, you should be going into two fields, marketing or IT. Particularly, I would say copywriting, or IT, and these are wonderful things that you can learn for free, online, yourself, 
just through videos and forums, et cetera, you control the output and you can do very well and you can maximize that actually better if you're coming from that background than you can coming from say Canada because you don't have the high cost of living, okay? So great, that's something that you can do. Well, I was in Egypt for the first time and I was just like, holy man, if I was born here, and I'm talking about the extreme to give you some idea, I think it was that like 23% of the population lives on less than, don't quote me on this, but maybe like $1,400 a year, an outrageously low amount. And you're driving through Cairo in certain areas and you see these buildings that have no window, no glass on the windows. It's super bad air pollution. So there's just wind blowing in there, it's dust, right? It's a very dusty place. You just think like just getting clean air is a struggle in that situation, let alone clean water, let alone, you know, staying healthy in terms of, you know, uh, if you were to get some sort of a wound or something like that. And it's just like growing up where you have to struggle in that way. This isn't, we're not even talking about extreme Africa. Imagine if you had to walk, you know, for three hours every day to get water, how much that reduces your ability to be productive and do anything in your life, right? If you don't have access to, you know, so long as you're in a part of the world that you have access to good internet, you can learn uh, a language where you can basically sell your services to somebody abroad and you can develop some skills, you have some capability there, right? But if you're born in this background, you just don't. And, you know, I hear people talk today about, you know, the idea of, you know, some people having it so much better than others in the Western world. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, you guys all have it so good. All of you do, it's nothing compared to these people. So, you know, you can develop a certain empathy and a certain understanding. I, another thing that I like to do is I like to, when I go to some of these places, think about, okay, if I was in charge of running this country, how would I, you know, affect social policy, right? Would I, how would I build infrastructure, what would I do? And some places you go there and you're just like, it's just jam packed everywhere. Like, how could you possibly adjust this whole situation? This is a super big challenge. Other places you can go and you can be inspired in the opposite way, right? I go to countries like Singapore, like Norway. These are two countries I consider very well run. And, you know, there's lots of different ideas you can get. You can say, wow, you know, they did a really good job here. Some places you can be inspired by their vision. Some places you can be inspired by their work ethic. Some places you can be inspired by their creativity. Some places you can be inspired by their hospitality. Some places you can just love their food. I'm a food guy, I love that. So there's so much that you gain by going to different parts of the world, even more so when you live in different parts of the world. I'm a big believer that creativity is not something that so much comes from within us, but is rather the coalescing, the commingling of lots of different influences and ideas in a way that sparks something unique. And the more of these you're exposing yourself to, the more access you have. It's like all these different resources, it's all these options that you can pull on. And that just has, such a benefit, not just in terms of business, not just in terms of opportunity, but in terms of richness as a person and what it is that you can kind of contribute to other people, how interesting you become, et cetera. So anyway, that's just a little bit about me, my philosophy on these things. Obviously each person can choose for themselves. I think it's a real pity when, you know, today it's become cheaper and cheaper to travel. You have these low cost airlines, you have Airbnb, you have you know, all these different sales that will come on, et cetera. Like, if you're not taking advantage of that, I think it's a misfortune. It's a missed opportunity. So anyway, I encourage you to do more of it. I know there have been years where, you know, I haven't traveled much. I haven't, you know, taken the time to see things and explore and do new things. I think every year, like every year on my birthday, I try to do something different. I have like a list of, you know, crazy new things. Like, and every year it gets harder because, you know, you've checked off so many things, but it's super fun. So. If you happen to be in a place where I am, you know, we'd love to meet with you. We'd love to, maybe we can go and do something cool, exciting, kind of explore, uh, get inspired by each other. If you like this video, please uh, let me know. If you have some questions, write right in the comments. You can tell me some of your favorite experiences traveling, some of your favorite places that you've been, etc. Like this video, click subscribe, uh, click the little notification bell, share these videos. We really appreciate any support that you can give us by letting your friends know, et cetera. We're working on building this channel bit by bit and trying to give you some good information. Go and check out our other videos. 
If you want to reach out to us, you can go to offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. Either one of those works. You can have a submission form. You can sign up if you want to do a consultation. Uh, if you're interested, we can help you with you know, company formations, tax planning, asset protection, payment processing, all these different things uh, to help you basically live and do business abroad, citizenship programs, residency programs, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, look forward to talking to you guys on the next video, and I will see you very soon.